for the first time in history, the parents of a school shooter might be charged for their children's crime. Today, the prosecutor in Oxford, Michigan, made that stunning announcement as Ethan Crumbly faced a judge for the first time for first-degree murder charges and terrorism. Kelsey Kernstein is live on the ground in Oxford, Michigan, with the latest. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Leland. Well, today the prosecuting attorney says she absolutely has evidence that 15-year-old Ethan Crumley planned to murder four children, four students, that is, at Oxford High School. Now, Crumbs faced a judge today charged as an adult with four counts of murder, one count of terrorism, seven counts of assault with intent to murder, and 12 counts of possession of a firearm. Among those who died, 16-year-old Tate Meyer, 14-year-old Hannah St. Juliana, 17-year-old Madison Baldwin, and 17-year-old Justin Schilling. Uh, the prosecution attorney saying that the office found mountains of evidence on social media to prove he planned this attack. Now, law enforcement thinks that he may have planned to shoot more people. When he surrendered, police found 18 rounds of ammunition left. Now, it's in the first of its kind of this situation, Crumbly's parents could face charges as a 15-year-old allegedly used a handgun his father bought on Black Friday. The prosecuting attorney said that owning a gun means securing it properly and locking it up, particularly involving minors. While I also was in the area of where the suspect lives, I spoke to neighbors. I spoke to one neighbor who told me, I asked her what would have possibly motivated Ethan Crumbly to do this. And she said that he was severely, severely bullied. And I asked why was he bullied? And she said it was because of the way he looked. But the sheriff's office saying today that he's seen no bullying in the case so far. and. And he's seen no bullying that would provoke this kind of attack, Leland. Yeah, stunning. So many unanswered questions, particularly about that gun. Kelsey, thank you. With that, we bring in legal analyst, attorney Karen Conti, criminal defense attorney, and as well as family law lawyer. Karen, good to see you. Maybe, and I'm wondering, as I think here, if I have the question the wrong way, why would the parents be charged? On the other hand, why haven't we seen more parents charged in all the school shootings over the past 10 or 15 years. Well, the laws really don't provide generally a lot of liability, criminal liability for parents. In fact, in uh, Michigan's law is, is really bizarre. It says that if a child is under 18, a parent can be held liable criminally for a child's actions if the child's under 18, uses a gun at the school, and if the parent knew the crime was going to be committed and did something to further the crime. So think about it. What parent, knowing that their child is going to bring a gun to school and shoot it, would further the crime? So again, how are you going to prosecute that? How are you going to prove these parents knew that this child was going to do it and did something to help the child do it? It's pretty interesting because evidently the parents were meeting with the principals, been called right. into the school to say, Ethan's behavior is very troubling just three hours ahead of time. Is there some overarching responsibility, as the prosecutor talked about, that at that point, AG, we probably should realize that the handgun we just bought needs to be locked up? Absolutely. And there are uh, states that have laws that say that guns have to be locked up, unloaded and locked up. But Michigan is not one of those. There is no law in Michigan that says if you have children, you have to lock up your gun. So, there, so it's very hard to charge somebody for a law that doesn't exist. That's exactly right. But on the other hand, if the parents knew he was acting goofy and he was posting stuff on social media saying, I'm going to kill students, and hey, by the way, here's my dad's handgun, well, then I think the parents are culpable in some way, whether that's uh, actually charging them for terrorism or charging them for some kind of accountability. Yeah, well, you make a great point, though. If you see a picture of your kid with a gun, uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're planning to use it. There's all these lines there, and obviously we're going to have to figure out a little bit more. What do you make of this severely bullied comment? Obviously, as somebody who was bullied in school, I have a lot of sympathy for, for that, uh, but... 
Is that something to play in here, or do we not care? Well, sticks and stones, right? But no, bullying is much different than maybe when I was a child, maybe not you. But, uh, and, and it can be very Thank difficult. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> it could be very difficult on children. We know this. We know the, all the school shootings. We see that bullying, you know, uh, is the, like a per precursor in some ways yeah. to this kind of thing. But again, that's now no defense right. at all to bring a loaded gun to school. I mean, again, going back, 15 years old, the father bought a gun, He's had bad behavior. The, got, the parents are in the school because some children actually called in and said, we're not going to school today because we saw this creepy stuff on social media. And still, he, this kid got the gun and brought it to school. Yeah, well, and, and, and to your point, what did the parents know and when did they right. know it? And they'll be going back through their phones and seeing if they saw the kid's Instagram post and everything else. Uh, awesome analysis, Karen. Thank you very All much. Right. Take Good care, Good to Leland. see you.